These sand dunes have long been a threat to the populations of Nye area, located in the region of Chess, about 50 kilometers from Dakar, the capital of Senegal. Because of climate change, they favor silting in this area, mostly inhabited by market gardeners, who provide more than 80% of the market garden production in Senegal. And this phenomenon of silting has negatively impacted the activities of market gardeners. There was a degradation of space in production spaces in general due to the effects of climate change, but also to the effects of man. All damages combined, there is a need to restore, recover, and protect the production systems to continue to serve the communities. In order to restore the Nyai Basin to its original vocation, the state of Senegal, in partnership with the government of Quebec, has set up the Saga project, which is implemented by the FAO, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. The aim of the project in the localities of Jogo and Jender is to revitalize the vegetation cover and to manage natural resources well. And this initiative is well executed by the Union Agricultural Producers of Quebec and the CNCR in Senegal in collaboration with the local communities. In the case of Jogo, it is necessary to protect the market gardening basins by fixing the semi-mobile dunes through reforestation. The process here in gender is revitalization of Lake Tanma. So I specify that it is a process of revitalization of Tanma Lake. We have only leverage funds. The objective is above all to fix the phenomenon of silting by reforesting first and to try to work on the encroachment of industrialists, sometimes farmers, who come to exploit the lands recovered by reforestation, therefore who cultivate in the lake. All this is silting phenomena that must be controlled in order to contain this phenomenon, but also to return to the filling of the lake, which is corollary of the filling of the water table. This project supports the agricultural component of our NDC in several aspects. The first is the identification and understanding of our vulnerability. Because to be able to adapt to the effect of climate change, you have to assess why you are vulnerable and what are the factors that explain your vulnerability. After that, we must define the measures to be implemented to reduce this vulnerability, to make socioeconomic activities and community resilient to climate change. After that, we will have to work towards integrating adaptation to climate change in the different planning documents. Because, as you know, adaptation to climate change concerns all socioeconomic sectors, and particularly agriculture, which is an extremely important sector for the economic and social development of our country qui est un secteur extrêmement important pour le développement économique et social de notre pays. For the implementation of these programs, communities have been trained on several aspects, notably on agroecology and natural resources management. Jogo is a vast area that is made up of 14 villages. And it is all these localities that have gathered around the Saga project to participate in the management of our natural resources, given the extent of the phenomenon of silting that we are witnessing. We are committed to restore the image of Jogo through this project which gives us knowledge on good agricultural practices, on the management of our resources on community initiatives. I think it's a good initiative to support us. However, I would have liked the donors to continue funding this program and to increase the budget to allow us to do more. We really wish that. In Jender, not far from Jogo, this place was like a desert because of salinization. But today, Thanks to the reforestation activities, 
we are beginning to see concrete results. The results of our reforestation are visible today. You see these plants that we reforested not long ago are starting to give satisfactory results. These falling leaves fertilize the soil and prevent salinization. And as an immediate consequence, today the populations have started to cultivate these species, whereas it was not even imaginable to practice an agricultural activity a few years ago. It is really comforting. We had grown okra here last season, and over there you will see cabbage, zucchini, etc. So the Saga project has shown its results here in Jander very early on and the people appreciate it very much. Still within the framework of the Saga project, various initiatives have been taken in other localities of the Chess region. Here, we are in the village of Kurngore, in the commune of Sheriff Lo, where the promotion of a sustainable management of water and wood resources has been at the center of the implementation. In this locality, the Quebec NGO Suco Solidarity Union Corporation and GRAIM, the Group of Research and Support to Materialist Initiatives of Senegal, have set up a water catchment system to facilitate the irrigation of nurseries and village woods and to help women gain easy access to firewood. That's the importance of village wood. When we need it, we come directly here to get it. Often, it is used to make agriculture equipment such as combings, dabas, or it is used as full wood. And when you cut the wood sleeve where it is needed, it grows back quickly. In addition to what she said, if today I had, for example, 10 wooden handles, I would have a lot of money, about 20,000 CFA francs the unit being 1,000 CFA francs. Farmers often buy them. We cut up the larger handles and rent them to the carpenters as a part of their work. This is how we operate here. We rent them out because there is a need in our community. All these are advantages of the village world. We had to work with communities, especially women's groups, in forestry, in energy management, but also in sustainable water management. With forestry, we installed 18 village nurseries, with women's groups, with the production of about 70,000 plants made up of forest and fruit species. These plants have been used to create village woods, such as where we are right now with the women's groups. The nurseries have also allowed women to plant and reforest village woods, but also to market them. Each of these women has also benefited from nurseries that they maintain in their concessions and then resell. And obviously, it is also a profitable activity. All the women in the village of Kuringore have received training in the making of tree nurseries. These nurseries, we took them from the garden, which you have already visited here. Each woman has them at home and sells them. Sometimes, a person can sell up to 25,000 or 50,000 CFA francs per day. Beyond the economic aspect, the foliage or shade that we have in our homes is also important for our health. Also, to fight against climate change, improved the stores, commonly called jambar, were also distributed to women in the commune of Fanden, in the region of Ches. They were also trained on how to make charcoal and improve stoves in order to minimize the pressure on the environment. We made this charcoal from cow dung 
grass, clay and water. That's what we mix to get this result. It is really effective and helps us a lot in the cooking. Now, we don't have to go to the bush to get cooking wood. These improved stoves are of great interest to us because they help fight against climate change. They give us good health and allow us to save money. Now, we don't have to go out in the hot sun in search of cooking wood. We now have some at home, especially the vegetable coal, which is very fast for cooking. In addition, these improved stoves do not give off much smoke, unlike others that give off a lot of smoke and affect our health. So these new stoves are a good solution for our health. Within the framework of the Saga project, several convincing results have been achieved. We are talking about 2,500 improved stoves that have been distributed to the population. We are talking about 100 people, mostly women, who have been trained on how to make improved stoves and vegetable charcoal. And the fact that the majority of the participants are women is very important, because we know the role that women can play in the search for solutions and the management of resources. We can also talk about the training of micro-gardening. About 30 nurseries have been installed or reinstalled with a productivity of about 70,000 trees, which is very important for our environment. After Fonden, we went to Sarem Sere, in the region of Djurbel, located about 150 km east of Dakar. Here, the same approach was implemented by the Union of Agricultural Producers and the CNCR. These women from Sarem Sere were also trained in the construction of improved stoves. As for all the prototypes, the material is the same. The way of making is the same. The only difference is that it is the prototype that is designed to cook from this wall, but also to cook from the top down. And in principle, if the prototype works, the more wood you put in, the wood does not burn into ashes but into embers. So when there are enough embers from the bottom to the top, you don't have to put more wood because the thermal intensity is already sufficient to cook the pot. So, this pot will heat up, will converge towards the pot, so very easily we won't need to put anything else, because just with heat we will cook. But if you also see, we have this foundation. It is so that the thermal intensity does not go deep. It's basically a prototype that is designed to converge all the thermal energy to the pot. These energy wars have undergone a whole process before ending up in these improved stoves. Moreover, these nurseries are also used to restore soil and forest resources in the face of rapid land degradation and its consequences on biodiversity. Indeed, it is a question of reforesting around the marigolds to curb the phenomenon of silting. <laughs> We have noticed advantages compared to the implementation in our village. The women no longer go in search of wood. They reforest at home for cooking. But we have also reforested the marigots, and in each marigot we have reforested 250 plants. The only problem we face is the termites that attack the plants and prevent them from growing. But we are not going to be discouraged. We will multiply our efforts to save our environment. However, we would like to have a borehole to facilitate our work. We also went to groundnut basin of Senegal, particularly to Kaulak, in the center of the country. We are precisely in Chahochofior, 
a village in the commune of Mjafat. In this part of the country, agriculture is the main activity of rural populations. With the effects of climate change, their activity is severely affected with the low agricultural productivity observed in recent years. It is with this in mind that the Sagak project intervened in the region to help agricultural actors overcome their difficulties. This based on endogenous knowledge. This morning, we are attending a training section in Chaho Chofior for members of a soil health advisory club. I am preparing a biopesticide which is a biofertilizer. We are making it with organic materials available here with leaves of the neem tree. We are doing it now because we are aware that chemicals are harmful to our health. These biostimulants allow us to fertilize the soil but also to fight against the termites that attack our productions. Today we see the results. Our yields are good. They have more than doubled and we are in good health now. Following the training we receive, I can tell you that we all must our soil now. What's more, they train us on how to make compost. And today, we have observed good productivity. I'm saying this because we used to use a lot of chemicals, because I used to receive more than 100 tons of these products as a member of the Pennet Producers Consultation Framework of Kaulak. But last year, I received less than 30 tons. This is to tell you that we have definitely turned our back to these chemicals. When we came, the first thing we did was to conduct a soil analysis. The characterization told us that our soil badly lacked organic matter, and that is the basis of any responsible agriculture. Based on this observation, we developed modules, that is the training component, among other modules, we designed the manufacture and use of compost, good agricultural practices, anti-erosive techniques, management of rainwater in an agricultural plot, and meteorological information. Another region of Senegal, located in the south, has also recorded the presence of the Saga project on its soil. We are precisely in Kolda, located about 70 kilometers from Dakar. Here, beekeeping activities have developed greatly in recent years. Honey has become a means of living for many families and a key factor in the empowerment of women in the region. Mama Jan Balo and Mariama Kande are a beekeeping couple. The couple benefited from the producers' field school program implemented by the Casamos Agri-Food Cooperative and the Quebec-based NGO Sokodevi, which works for international development. Honey production helps me a lot in my life. I am 52 years old and I have been doing beekeeping for 15 years. I do this activity with my wife and she even helps us in the management of the daily needs like the payment of the schooling of our children. Beekeeping is my passion and thank God we received the support of the Saga project within the framework of the field school program which allowed us to perform and be autonomous. We understood that there are women who were afraid to start beekeeping practices. But since they see me doing it and I share my experiences with them, they too have decided to start. Because they see that I have become autonomous and that I manage my household well with my husband without us having to sell a single head of livestock. This motivates them more and we have opened our arms greatly to them. 
The field school approach has allowed these beekeepers to benefit from good practices with the introduction of modern beehives. The processes the practice apicals that depuis l'installation des richettes the process of setting up beekeeping the practices such as harvesting from the installation of beehives all this was given by trainers the aspect of climate change was also one of the points raised given the climate change it was advised to do reforestation because currently the bees have many problems to access water. It is also advisable to feed them by making water available to them when needed. When we notice that there is a lack of water, we must do everything possible to provide them with water so that they can adapt to climate change. Quand les apiculteurs arrivent, il y a une salle de ce que nous appelons salle de réception qui est en face. When the beekeepers arrive, there is a reception room across the street. We take the buckets there, then the cake, then we do the waiting. First, we check the cake to see how it looks. If we agree that it's a good cake, we bring in the buckets, we wait it, and then we call the beekeeper. Only then does the beekeeper enter. But he comes in to see how much weight he has brought in. Then, according to the weight, we buy. And we don't buy on credit, we always do it cash. Then the beekeeper leaves and we get to work. After the packaging phase of the honey, here is one of the stores where the marketing is done. Here, the products are well highlighted. Korotimi Jara, president of the Kazamas Cooperative for the honey sector, has trained several local women in beekeeping practices. Grâce à ce programme FAO, ces apiculteurs ont suivi des formations. Thanks to this FAO program, these beekeepers were trained in the treatment and the conditioning of honey, and in its production too. This allowed the cooperative to have quality honey and in quantity, because today, the beekeepers who were not trained in the practices of production of honey cake in the practices of her conditioning and treatment of a honey, acquired knowledge in this field. So today, thanks to all this, we received a very good quality honey at our cooperative. With the climatic changes, the honey sector has been greatly affected. With the climatic changes, the honey sector has been greatly affected. There have been diseases in the bees, as much as bushfires, which have affected production. Here, we have modern and up-to-date techniques. Beekeepers were taught how to put them in place, close to water sources, how to prevent bushfires, how to detect diseases in bees, quickly how to prevent the termite attacks. So there were all these techniques that were taught to the beekeepers. Then there was a whole training on a level of gender equality. The woman beekeeper also, so that she has her place in the value chain, so that she is able to manage her beekeeping activity as an income generating activity. All these components developed within the framework of the Saga project have as a major objective to help the state of Senegal to face the effects of climate change by training farmers on new adaptation techniques. Thus, the project has recorded convincing results. Moreover, the authorities in charge of the Saga project wish to duplicate the model in other countries of the African continent. Les outils que nous avons mis en œuvre prouvent que quand the tools we have implemented prove that when a project of this kind is really territorialized and that the communities, especially the women, are involved and well trained in soil, water and plant management techniques, the results are always convincing. 
Hoping it gets implemented on a national scale in Senegal, we call on the Quebec government and other countries so that other countries can benefit from this project. And since I cover 15 countries in the sub-region, I would like the Quebec government to support other countries as well, since we have already developed all the tools, methodology and approach. Et tout ce qui est méthodologie et approche. C'est un projet qui, euh, on peut dire, euh, a dépassé toutes les attentes, euh, vraiment. This euh, is a project cette, that has already exceeded all expectations. Euh, I think this collaborative approach is different from an approach that is often competitive et, euh, between people in the field. The partners really appreciated this collaborative um, approach. Again, it's addressing real needs, so the impact is immediate on the ground. And inevitably, it is local population who benefit. For us, it was a very enriching experience, and I think it has even influenced our new territorial strategy for Africa. Because this holistic approach is now at the heart of what we want to put forward for Africa in our collaboration and cooperation projects, whether it is on climate, on agriculture, or on biodiversity, I think this is the approach that should be prioritized. And it is also a recommendation of the IPCC to go with approaches that are multi-partner qui sont multi-acteurs, multi-partenaires. With the involvement of communities in such programs, the Saga Food Security has shown that with a little guidance, agricultural actors can make food systems more viable and resilient to the effects of climate change.